you're based in America, perhaps you can tell us the differences between the UK and the American markets when it comes to carbon. Yes, well, I think that the survey showed us that there's strong interest in forestry across the board in the US and in Europe, um, UK. But what we've seen is an increase in Europe. You know, in America, there's always been an, in, an interest in forest carbon. They see it, they understand why it, it's important, why uh, you, you can get emissions reductions from avoided deforestation and from planting trees. And people in, in Europe understand that too, as we see, but there has been a period over the last so many years uh, that you know forestry has, they haven't been confident in it, hasn't had a high level of, uh, of, of respect and, and uh, interest, and that's obviously increasing in Europe, so now we're getting it across the board. We saw at COP15, a lot of people were talking about red in the first week, and it seemed to be getting somewhere. And then, as you, as you said when you were talking about the report earlier, then it got put to the side. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to be discussed again in December. Mm -hmm. But where, where do you see it going now? OK. Well, um, forestry was really was a hot topic. It is a hot topic. And what there was general sort of feeling that forestry was actually among the most sort of agreed parts of the deal. And it wasn't because of forestry that the deal didn't go through. And that was one reason why it sort of got slightly put to the side, because they'd made lots of progress and lots of interest. The safeguards are in there that a lot of people were asking for. Uh, they could potentially be stronger, but there's uh, you know, a lot of um, interest and, and excitement about how RED is going to work and how it's going to bring uh, financing to developing countries to really reduce uh, deforestation and bring benefits uh, to sustainable development in those countries. Um, and in fact, the survey shows that the that uh, the respondents felt that forestry were you know positive about forestry after COP15. You know, I think it was something like 75 percent felt that it was as positive as before, and 20 percent or more or less thought it was more positive than before COP. So you know, I'm not the only one who's feeling relatively positive about forestry, and of course what we need is the whole deal to go through. Your survey does show that a lot of people are positive about the ideas of carbon investing in forests, but not so many people are taking it up. What, what can we do to turn the positive attitude into people investing in it? Yeah, well, you know, these forestry projects are basically land use change. It requires a lot of investment of time and effort and uh, consultation with local people and building trust with governments. And, and those kinds of activities require investment up front. They need, they need financing. And you know, until forestry is really a, a totally integrated into the, the policy framework, there's a reticence to actually put the money down and, and make the change. So in fact, there aren't actually that many forestry credits out there. So there's a lot of interest. People are interested in forestry. There's not so many available to buy. And it's partly just because it, it, it needs that extra kickstart of the policy framework to really make it, make it fly. The, the report lists uh, areas like South America, South Asia, and Africa as prime, as desirable areas to invest in. They're obviously, there's conversations with doing, doing business over there. How do you think we get over that? Well, it's important that you do, you use the appropriate social and environmental standards, you know. <laughs> well, I would say that. I work for the Climate Community and Biodiversity Alliance. We've produced the, the sort of, uh, market leading standard for multiple benefit forest carbon projects. That's the CCB standards. And now we're working on standards for national level programs, the Red Plus Social and Environmental Standards. And I think the the buyers, the investors, they've got the message that uh, there are risks, social and environmental risks, reputational risks associated with forestry, and huge potential benefits. And uh, these standards help to ensure that, that, the that the good projects and the good activities uh, are getting funded and will uh, that creates a positive incentive for governments and project developers to continue in that, in that kind of line. Thank you very much. Okay.